For my money, there are not enough people on YouTube talking about Errol Flynn movies. So today I'm going to be talking about my Errol Flynn movie collection, specifically on Warner Archive Blu-ray. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Cobwebs channel, where we are dusting out classic movies. My name is Daniel. And yes, Errol Flynn is one of my favorite movie stars of all time. He was a massive action adventure star, specifically in the 1930s and 40s. He was Robin Hood in the original The Adventures of Robin Hood, but he did a lot of other movies too. And Warner Archive, one of my favorite Blu-ray labels, has been doing an amazing job lately of releasing his films on Blu-ray in beautiful restorations, even with a few special features. These are not his, his biggest classics. These are not Robin Hood or Captain Blood, but they're movies that very much deserve discussing. And first of all, is Adventures of Don Juan. Not the Adventures of Don Juan, just Adventures of Don Juan, which I find a little bit weird. It's from 1948, 10 years after Robin Hood, and it does feel like kind of an attempt to recreate the magic of the Adventures of Robin Hood. It's let's take another legendary character from the past and uh, from like a medieval sort of time, a swashbuckler, and put Errol Flynn in the role and make it a big, bright, and colorful swashbuckler. The film is about the legendary adventurer and womanizer Don Juan, played by Errol Flynn, and apparently he's creating some political conflicts for Spain, his country, in that he just seems to be fooling around with so many important men's wives, and then they cause problems, and the queen calls Don Juan to court and is like, you've got to stop this. You need to settle down. You're causing too much problems for us. So uh, they force him to get a job. He works as the fencing instructor at the Royal Academy. It's actually a really excellent swashbuckler, because while in Robin Hood, Errol Flynn's character doesn't really have an arc, which is okay. He's just the, fam the most noble hero of all time, and that's enough for me. Uh, but in this film, he's a man who's very much learning, and he has an arc, and he starts out in a place of a lot of immaturity, and he learns to be more mature through the film. And I really appreciated that about this movie. But it also kind of has a tongue-in-cheek about the swashbuckler genre, which I really appreciated. There's a lot of good humor to this movie that doesn't take you out of the reality of the world that it lives in, but uh, just some good jokes. And Errol Flynn is actually very funny in the movie. Alan Hale, who is his sidekick in so many movies, is his sidekick in this film. And the main love interest of the movie is Vivica Lindfors. And she plays the Queen of Spain. And it's actually a really great relationship because Don Juan is a guy who can get any woman, right? Uh, and he has. Uh, but the Queen is basically the one woman that he can't have. So it creates a lot of good conflict there. And while Errol Flynn romances in his movies tend to have a lot of back and forth banter and a lot of playful arguing, screwball comedy like, uh, they're very much much just two people who respect each other, two mature adults, and then who come to love each other. And it's a more mature romance than I'm used to seeing in Errol Flynn movies, not as a knock on other movies, but th that was just really cool to see. The swashbuckling fighting is great. There's great action. Robert Douglas is the evil man who's kind of trying to take over the monarchy. There's always somebody trying to take over the throne from the rightful king in Errol Flynn movies, and Flynn's got to stop him. And he's a great villain. He's really like 1940s Mads Mikkelsen, just looks so sinister. I I do enjoy that about swashbucklers is the lack of moral grace. You know, I like moral gray in like a Western or something like that, but I do love in swashbucklers how the hero is so noble and the villain is so evil. And we know exactly what we want to, we know exactly what we want to happen. And I really appreciate that about these movies. So great action, amazing costuming and sets. It's a jaw dropping, gorgeous film and Warner archive restoration has done it all the favors. It looks so good. As far as special features, uh, it's got a commentary by the director, Vincent Sherman, and historian, Rudy Bamer. It's got a Warner Night at the Movies, which I like on these Warner Archive releases. That includes a vintage newsreel, an Oscar-nominated comedy short, a travel short, and a classic cartoon, Hair Splitter. Uh, these Warner Archive releases often include um, Looney Tunes cartoons or other kind of cartoons, but usually Looney Tunes. And I love Looney Tunes. I've always been more of a Bugs Bunny guy than a Mickey Mouse guy, so I really love that. Adventures of Don Juan is one of my favorite swashbucklers. It's kind of faded off into obscurity and I think that's a crime because I think it's a great film. It's pretty cheap on Amazon right now as most all of these are and I highly recommend it. But an Errol Flynn swashbuckler that's fallen into obscurity much less is actually the Seahawk and I believe this is the first Errol Flynn movie that Warner Archive released on Blu-ray. It's the first one I picked up because I remember this film from my childhood because I very much grew up on these Errol Flynn movies. I really enjoy them. But this is one that actually I don't think it's as good as some of his other ones. Um, I don't think it's as good as Adventures of Don Juan. So we 
always been a movie that I like, but I don't love it. I find it a little bit dull. And that's because Errol Flynn's character here has much less bravado than usual. He's a much more humble and quiet character, even though he's a pirate captain, Captain Jeffrey Thorpe. But he's very much the most noble Boy Scout pirate you can be. There's really no edge to him. And his love interest, who is played by Brenda Marshall, really is a big problem for me in this movie. I find her very boring, a very a character with just no character traits whatsoever. Most all she does in the movie is mope around. It doesn't work for me at all. Claude Rains is the villain. Claude Rains is one of my favorite actors, but he doesn't really get enough screen time to make a big impact in this movie. The main point of this movie, and they even acknowledge it in the back description of the Blu-ray, is that it is supposed to be British patriotism propaganda. It's coming out, as the back of the Blu-ray will tell you, um, right around the time that Hitler is really attacking Britain. And this movie is a mouthpiece for British patriotism propaganda. Look, I totally understand the need for that in the 1940s. I'm not exactly knocking that morally or philosophically or anything like that, but hasn't aged the best because of that. And it does feel like a movie that was made for that purpose and less to be entertaining, but still directed by Michael Curtiz, still got some good action. It is a remake of a silent film and they even reuse some shots of like the ships and there's great um, pirate ship shots in this film. So it's always been a movie that I like Happy to have it. Don't love it. I don't think it's near as good as Don Juan, and that seems to be a little bit of an unpopular opinion. But let's go to a movie that I do love, and that's Edge of Darkness, which I don't think I did see when I was a kid. I, I'm pretty sure I saw this for the first time on this Warner Archive Blu-ray, and I loved it. It's a World War II movie, contemporary set, unlike the Seahawk, and it came out in 1942, I believe, 43, and... I'm not always the biggest fan of war movies, but I love a war movie like this because this movie is not about soldiers. And sometimes when I just see a bunch of soldiers marching and they're all dressed exactly the same, I, my brain checks out a little bit. I'm not proud to say, but this is about normal people rising up against oppression. Essentially, it is about a Norwegian village that gets occupied by the Nazi forces. They're controlled by the Nazis at this point. And Errol Flynn is a guy who lives there who helps to build a rebellion against them among all just all the normal townspeople. And he's just a fisherman in this film. Him and Anne Sheridan, who is his co-star, they're in a relationship from the beginning of this movie. And I appreciated that. It's something a little bit different. This movie's not about will they, won't they? Will they get together? Will they fall in love? They're in a relationship from the start. They don't break up at any point. It's very much about them as a team and them working together. And they feel very much like equal leaders in this film, which is very interesting from the 1940s. She's a very strong and intense character, very angry at the Nazis. And they work together through the whole film to stop these bad guys. Uh, but it's very much an ensemble. Errol Flynn's not actually in the movie as much as I expected him to be. Like the whole first hour is like going among all the different townspeople and kind of showing what their problem with the Nazis is and why they want to really rebel against that. I don't know if I have any Star Wars fans watching here. Actually, I wore a Star Wars shirt. This is a total coincidence. Um, I didn't even think about that. But this reminded me of the new Star Wars show, Andor. Andor is very much about the slow process of building a rebellion and about how does the Empire work. And that reminds me a lot of Edge of Darkness. So I could definitely see some influence of this into Star Wars later on. It's a really great Errol Flynn movie. He's great in the movie. Everyone else is. As far as special features, it's got a WB short called Gun to Gun. It's got a classic cartoon, To Duck or Not to Duck. Really funny, really fun. I love Looney Tunes and a theatrical trailer. Now let's let's go to a movie that I really don't like. I don't love er every Errol Flynn movie. I don't love this movie. And that's Santa Fe Trail, which is a Western that takes place soon before the Civil War. And it, it's somewhat historically based. From what I've read, it's very very historically inaccurate, so don't watch it as any kind of historical document. And it's about this uh, this guy who really lived called John Brown, kind of a controversial figure. He was an abolitionist who fought to free the slaves, and he was a reverend, and, and he quotes the Bible through this whole film. But um, he tries to free the slaves through very violent means, and that made him controversial in this time. And Errol Flynn and Ronald Reagan, their co-stars in this movie, are going out to stop him. And the problem is, this is an action-adventure movie, and I just think the premise is broken from the start. Because what it's really about is, we should not do anything to help oppressed people. We should just stand by and do nothing and hope things change uh, by natural course. And that doesn't work for me in an action movie. Like, we need our hero to stand up for what's right. And Errol Flynn has a lot of speeches in this movie about how, hey, maybe things will work out, but we should just trust that. We shouldn't do anything about slavery. Like, we should just let it happen. And it's very weird. The movie feels like it's shoving a political message down my throat. It's a very political movie. I felt preached to through the whole movie. And I thought the message was gross. Only an anti-slavery message is okay with me. At this point, even in the 1940s, I think this was kind of weird 
It's a very weird movie, even for the time period, to make a movie that's so anti being anti slavery. Like if you don't even want to say pro slavery, bizarre. I don't like it at all. Mar- Michael Curtiz is a great director. Errol Flint and Olivia de Havilland, his most consistent co-star have great scenes together. Ronald Reagan didn't really work for me in this movie, especially when you, you put him next to Errol Flynn. Errol Flynn is one of the most charismatic movie stars who's ever lived. I will die on that hill. Um, and Ronald Reagan's, you know, he was a more B rate actor. Of course he became more successful in another field, but just as far as an actor, that's all we're talking about. Very flat and his performance kind of took me out sometimes, but Flynn and DeHavlin are great. I don't blame them for this movie. Stars in this time didn't have a lot of control over what roles they got to get, so I just think it's kind of a gross movie. I don't really like it, and it has no special features, so this is the one I don't think they really wanted to honor, and I understand why. But let's get more positive to end things off with a period piece costume drama, and that is The Private Lives of Elizabeth in Essex, which is also a historical movie. I don't know how historically accurate. I can't speak to that. About Queen Elizabeth, played by Betty Davis, and the Earl of Essex, whose name is Robert something, played by Errol Flynn. And it's about their relationship. Their very strange and unconventional relationship, because Queen Elizabeth, she was she's known historically for one aspect is her not being very attractive. And they really play that up in this movie. They put Betty Davis in a lot of makeup up to almost make her look somewhat grotesque and they talk a lot about how she's so much older than Errol Flynn and this is 1939 Errol Flynn he is in his prime he looks like an Adonis in this movie and their relationship is strange to a lot of people and it's kind of a toxic relationship and they know that but it's like they're addicted to each other they argue constantly they don't fit together but they have so much passion for each other that they neither of them can really control against their better judgment. And I thought it was a really interesting movie in that way. I was kind of fascinated by it the whole way. This is what I did see when I was a kid and I did not like. It's not a movie for kids. This is not a fun adventure movie. This is very much a character drama and kind of a political intrigue kind of movie. And one aspect about their relationship I found so fascinating is the throne keeps coming between them because she has the throne, but she won't share the power with him. She won't marry him so he can be king even though he really wants to be king because she knows he would be kind of a Genghis Khan kind of a Napoleon he's too much of a war hero and he's too much uh he has too much of a lust for glory personal glory not glory for England which is what she really cares about and she wants what's best for her people not what's best for him and that's what he really cares about and that whole aspect I found very interesting it's a visually gorgeous movie there there's a lot of artifice to it it looks very obviously on sets and such but the costumes and the sets are also beautiful Vincent Price has a small supporting role in this movie love to see Vincent Price in an old Hollywood film before he became a giant horror star and Betty Davis and Errol Flynn are incredible together they're just two phenomenal actors there are scenes of so much power and chemistry. If I had to complain about one aspect of the movie, they might talk about their love and how powerful their love is a little bit too much for me. Like, pull that back just a tad. Um, but otherwise, I thought it was an excellent film. Special features include Leonard Malton hosts Warner Knight at the movies with newsreel, musical short, an old cartoon, and theatrical trailer. And has a featurette called Elizabeth and Essex Battle Royale, which I haven't watched yet. I wonder if that's about the history. That could be really interesting. So that is The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex. And that's my whole collection of Errol Flynn movies on Warner Archive Blu-ray. I will tell you they have one more movie released with Errol Flynn, and that's Objective Burma, which is another war movie. And I haven't picked it up yet. I'm sure I will eventually. But like I said, I struggle with war movies a little bit. It's a genre I'm slowly getting more into. And it's two hours and 20 minutes. I'm not sure if that's my thing. So I haven't bought it yet, but I'm sure I will eventually because I want to own all the Errol Flynn movies. Um, or maybe I'll just check it out on TCM or something like that. But um, in any case, that's my collection right now. Which of these films do you have? Are you an Errol Flynn fan? Are you interested in any of these movies? Let me know anything you want down in the comments below. One thing I love about doing this YouTube channel is the interaction that I get with viewers. That's that's something I've been having a lot of fun with. So let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed it, give this video a like. and. A Subscribe for more old classic movie content because we've got more coming very soon.